Bark, the water token. Where can it go? Can it go to a dollar? Can it go way beyond that? This is the Bark Price Prediction. I'm your host, Bill Noble. If you like price prediction videos or market updates, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're posting a new video and hit the like button on this one because I know you're going to like it. Okay, let's talk about Bark. What is it? Bark is a water pricing mechanism. It comes from the Gold Retriever universe. I am the director of research at Gold Retriever. I own this token. I came to the Gold Retriever universe and the team when they told me they were building Bark, which is a blockchain-based mechanism to get water from one place to the other, just like an oil futures contract will help people get oil from one place to another. Now, again, this is not a security, not a futures contract, and this is not investment advice. This is technical analysis. This is the Blue Arctic white paper found on the Blue Arctic site that I just showed you, bluearctic.xyz. It's B-L-U. Okay, so read the white paper. Now, let's go to technical analysis about Bark as of January 13th, 2023. This is the Bark four hour chart. <clears throat> and as you can see, Bark was initially airdropped to GLDN holders. So, Bark, you know, had a little nice little move up. And then, of course, on FTX and the related crypto FUD. And frankly, a FUD storm on GLDN. Let me just bring the screen up here. Okay. So Bark was originally airdropped to GLDN holders, like I said. It had a nice little run up and then got absolutely hammered along with everything else. So there was a FUD storm about this ecosystem and there was the FUD storm in the market from FTX. So let's start with just doing something simple. Let's try simple FIB retracement. So we started here. It went all the way up to 27 cents. And then let's take a look at what it did. So of course, like everything in crypto, it does something incredibly painful to anybody who's trying to hodl. Everyone's like, oh, hodling is so great. Yeah, it's great when you hodl. And it looks like it's going to zero on tax loss selling. Okay. So Bark spent a lot of time below the 78% retracement. Okay. Why do we look at retracements? Because it's a great way to find support. So 0 0.008, 0 0.088. Okay. That's where Bark scared everyone to death. And if you thought everyone was scared to death in Bark, the fear in GLDN was even higher. And GLDN survived. <clears throat> and GLDN survived because GLDN is how you buy Bark. You can't buy Bark with ETH. You've got to buy it with GLDN. And I would refer you back to that price prediction video. All right. The good news is, is that Bark is now back above 62% retracement of its recent move. 62% is about 12 cents. That's a key level in crypto as a whole. So if you have a token, the token goes up and then the token goes down and it either takes out the 62% retracement level and then comes back above it. Or if it holds 62%, well, that's just dandy. In this case, with the FUD storm that occurred right around Thanksgiving and the tax loss selling at FTX, uh, we're going to give this particular token a pass that it went below because it's now come back above it with gusto. Okay. Now this thing is trading like fundamental catalysts are coming. All right. Now let's, let's try to examine how high it could go using Fibonacci extension analysis. What is Fibonacci extension analysis? It was a tool that worked fantastically well <clears throat> during the go-go DeFi days. 
Like something would go up, it would go down, and then when it would start making new highs or going parabolic, this was the best way to track the stopping points or the end destinations of the up move. Okay, so there, if you look at the settings, right, for trend, fib, speed, trend-based fib extension, I look at the 38%, the 1.618, and 3. And I do that because I charted the entire 2020-2021 bear market, taking request after request on live streams, and this worked out great. So as of the recording of this, Bark is around 17 cents. The 38% extension is 34 cents. So it stands to reason that Bark might make a new high. Now, one of the ways you would, you know, assume Bark might be on making a new high is that the world's running out of water. Like it is a fact, not a fundamental analysis, that the state of Arizona could be out of water in 2020. So if this was the first wave up, right? Elliott wave has five parts. If this first wave to 27 cents was wave one, and this awful correction that shook everyone out, scared everybody below eight cents, created all kinds of puking, the up only nature here would indicate, along with basic wave theory, that this green up only patch that you see here, okay, that's a three wave because there's initial wave up, there's excitement, the second wave flushes everyone out, and then when everyone's out, it goes up only. Right? No, if Bark goes on a three wave trajectory, what are the levels that the Fibonacci extension analysis highlights? Well, there's 62 cents. And then, of course, there is 93 cents. So that's the top end price prediction for Bark is 93 cents. Now, <clears throat> is there any evidence that Bark could go beyond that? This is a four hour chart. All right. And I'm going to do something like totally unprecedented. Like I could blow up the whole video by doing this. So, be careful. Okay. I'm going to draw GAN analysis and I'm going to put, I'm going to put a 45 degree line right through the center of my little Fibonacci extension analysis. And I'm going to try to see if I zoom down. All right. So when I draw these GAN fan lines, it's another system like Elliott wave, like Fibonacci extension analysis. And I'm like, you know what, if this thing really went, if it went beyond 93 cents, where could Bark go in theory? This is the four hour chart. So at 17 cents, it could go to 93 cents. Then if you look at the GAN work, you could see something. You can use this as a point of time. So let's say there was a summer rally in Bark. Let's pretend that. Let's say it's a very dry summer and some of the GAN forecasting that I've seen, okay, says there's going to be a drought in the summer. So where could Bark be, say, in June? or perhaps July. So there's one level over here from the GAN line at four. Okay, that's June. Now, if things got really wild, where's the next GAN line? Just, just an observation. Where's the next GAN line above four? It's at 9.85. Now, is that a subjective look to go from 34 cents to 93 cents and to say, well, there is a way to draw four or 9.5, 9.8 for a bigger rally? 
Now, why would you do that? Why would you why why would you even draw something like that? Well, because do you know what the price of water should be? Or more specifically, do you think people who need water, they need it, are going to necessarily care what they have to pay for it? Okay? If they need it. Because nobody knows what the price of, you know, delivered water should be because transportation, storage, all that is involved. Bark is a price discovery mechanism. So is 93 cents a chart point? Yes. Is that the right price for water? I don't know. I don't know. And that's, amaz that's what's amazing about Bark <clears throat> is that it allows for price discovery. So if there's a drought, it could be 93 cents, it could be four, it could be 9.85. So let's sum it up. The GLDN universe brings commodities to the blockchain. The first commodity it's bringing is water. Water could be worth 93 cents, $4, or 9.3, or more specifically, the key chart points for Bark are 93 cents, four, and nine dollars. Everyone's always asking, what's the next big mover in crypto? Water. Think about it. I'm your host, Bill Noble. We'll see you next time.